Welcome back. You're watching The Globe on the SABC News Channel. And we're joined now by the leader of the opposition in Zimbabwe, the MDC Alliance President, Nelson Chamisa. Uh, Mr. Chamisa, thanks very much indeed uh, for joining us. Uh, welcome to the program. Thank you, Peter. Good evening to you. All right, so just before the break, we heard from President uh, Emerson Mnangagwa, and he said that uh, a lot of people, rogues, were working in league with uh, international uh, parties and uh, quarters to divide Zimbabweans. And he says that uh, these rogues will be flushed out, these bad apples. Your reaction to the President's speech? Well, it's very unfortunate that uh, we are getting these very reckless statements uh, from uh, uh, the leadership of the country. At a time when our country is in very dire and serious circumstances, uh, in terms of corruption, in terms of the indicators economically, in terms of the political stalemate and crisis we have, the human rights abuses we have, the divisive nature of our state and the disunity in the country on account of political polarization. What we would want is not political activism, political point scoring, but we want a statement, a, a unifying figure, a father figure, a leader who is able to bring people together, to unite people in peace, in love, in harmony, in stability. But what we then have is this thing appointing, which is basically not helpful, because what it does is it escalates the problem in the country. Uh, instead of healing, we are further causing new wounds. Instead of uh, bringing together, we are tearing apart. And that's very unfortunate. You can't call your citizens wrong. You can't call your citizens terrorists. You have to make sure that you unify instead of dividing. All right, make sense for us uh, from your perspective what you've been seeing in recent weeks. Uh, help us understand uh, how you see what's been playing out in your country. Well, what we have seen over the past uh, few weeks by uh, way of abduction, um, uh, detention, uh, illegal and unlawful arrest, um, uh, the increase in human rights abuses. Uh, especially at the end of the state, uh, abuse of uh, our journalists, abuse of our lawyers, abuse of generally all the citizens uh, in the country. It's an escalation of uh, the problem that has already been there, which problem is essentially a problem of uh, governance, essentially a problem of legitimacy, essentially a problem of uh, uh, disputes around uh, the elections in 2018. So the legitimate crisis is what is showing all these signs that we've always indicated have actually affected our country. Why do you think that there's been an escalation of uh, this uh, firm hand from the authorities in recent weeks? Well, it's basically the legitimate uh, question. Where there's no legitimate force increases, where the system or the state is not um, in unison or working with the people, with the citizens, there is likely to be um, a, a lot of uh, uh, suspicion. Uh, instead of citizens being treated uh, as stakeholders, citizens are now being treated as stakeholders, uh, as uh, suspects and as uh, people who must be targeted and eliminated, defined as bad apples or wrong elements. Uh, this is basically an indication of a fragile state, of a disputed state, of a state that is running uh, a banana republic where citizens have been uh, relegated to circumstances of being the periphery uh, without necessarily being the center of decision making where citizens are supposed to be at the core of the decisions of a government. So w we are seeing that uh, democratic space is uh, being eroded citizens are not being allowed to freely express themselves in terms of the constitution of our country. Demonstrations are legal. Demonstrations and expressions you know, of, of uh, fundamental freedom is something that is enshrined in the constitution, but we are seeing uh, the uh, discrediting of that space and disallowing of that uh, fundamental right. But are demonstrations allowed during COVID-19? Because 
Um, there are regulations that citizens must abide by, and so surely the authorities have to stop citizens to protect them from themselves. Nothing is about the Constitution. The Constitution, in terms of Section 59, allows citizens to freely express themselves. Of course, with the due regard to uh, circumstances of social distancing uh, in terms of uh, the COVID regulations. So, but nothing takes away fundamental freedoms. We have seen over time that most of the regimes are beginning to hide behind the veneer of the pandemic to also extend authoritarianism, to also entrench authoritarian rules, and you know, making sure that they suspect from the citizens' rights, and that is what we've seen in Zimbabwe. There's nothing that stops Zimbabweans from physically expressing themselves. Nothing overrides the Constitution. All right. Some people have been uh, sending messages on social media, and they're saying that, uh, Mr. Chamisa, you are sending your people out there knowing that they'll be beaten, knowing that they'll be arrested. Well, uh, one, one most important thing I must emphasize is that I don't have people. Uh, but when we do express ourselves as a people, as Zimbabweans, this is not a solo project. It's a, a unified approach. It is no longer about ZANU PF. It's no longer about NDC. It's now about the project Zimbabwe. It's about our collective being. It's about our collective Ubuntu, our dignity. When you have citizens who have nowhere to go in terms of uh, refuge, uh, especially in the context of their government, you, you, you then begin to question what else can citizens do? And when citizens find a way of peacefully expressing themselves against corruption, against bad governance, against, against human rights abuses, that cannot be a basis to then take away their freedoms or to then abuse them, to expose them to the vagaries of uh, uh, torture, uh, intimidation, uh, beatings, abduction, and some of the things we have never seen. Where we have gone back to Stone Age politics, Stone Age tactics in government, using shambles against citizens, you know, kicking citizens as if you are kicking a soccer ball. That tells you that something is fundamentally wrong in the minds of those who are supposed to superintend upon the affairs of men. Um, you've met Hopewell Chinono in uh, prison. Uh, tell us about that meeting. How is he doing? Because his arrest has become one of the focal points of the Zimbabwean Lives That Matter movement and campaign. Uh, symbolic in many ways, I guess, in what people are describing as the shrinking of the democratic space and uh, freedom to express oneself. Clearly. What you have seen uh, in the attack against uh, journalists uh, symbolized by Hopewell, and also an attack against the lawyers, an attack against the church, an attack against the leadership of the opposition, particularly the NBC Alliance, including members of parliament being incarcerated. As we speak right now, we have members of parliament, we have uh, members of the leadership who are actually on the run, who are on the wanted list by the police, not for any crime, but just for being part of the alternatives, for simply belonging to the NBC. So what you then see in Hopewell is a dramatization of the challenge that we now have, that uh, nobody can breathe. Zimbabweans can't breathe, including journalists, including even professionals, including even the church, including even those who are in politics. Nobody is paid of this. So when I met Hopewell, and our colleague uh, Gary Pume in, in the prison. They, they were in high spirit, but clearly they indicated that um, uh, they were determined and they won the solidarity of all of us to make sure that we peacefully express ourselves. And going forward, we have to be very strong, we have to be committed, and we have to provide leadership in an appropriate manner. And we are ready to provide that leadership so that we are able to express ourselves peacefully. Yes, there is the temptation to be violent because we are being invited to be violent, because we are being treated violently. But we have said ours is a democratic movement. We should never, ever be tempted to go on the low road of violence. Ours is a high road of peace. Ours is a high road of democracy. Ours is a high road of nonviolence. Ours is a high road of making sure that we democratically achieve democracy in Zimbabwe. 
All right, Mr. Chamisa, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll talk about that way forward. What different ways can you use to engage? President uh, Mnangagwa has uh, called you to sit at the table with him, but this isn't something that you've taken up. So we'll find out why and uh, what else can be done after this. Stay with us.